With Amex Platinum, you can enjoy access to dedicated card member entrances at select events because skipping the line makes you the star of game day. That's the powerful backing of American Express. Terms apply. Learn more at americanexpress.com slash with Amex. Card member entrance access not limited to Amex Platinum card. Your teen requested a ride, but this time not from you. It's through their Uber teen account. You drive your teenager around a lot to their friend Jacob's house, their other friend Jake's house, to James's, to Jaden's, to Jalen's, to... Uh, Mom, this is Jake's house, not Jacob's. Now with an Uber teen account, your teen can request a ride under your supervision. They'll ride with a highly rated driver, and with live trip tracking, you'll follow along the whole ride to their friends' houses that all sound the same. Add your teen to your Uber account today. See app for details. Bye, Mom. This episode is brought to you by Coffee Mate. Coffee Mate is the world's biggest coffee lover. Because we love all the ways you enjoy... What? Wait. Coffee Mate can't love coffee more than me. I'm a foodie. I went to Kyoto just for a nitro matcha latte. What? Oh, I have to finish the ad. Coffee Mate, for the love of coffee. Summer's here, and you can now get almost anything you need for your sunny days delivered with Uber Eats. What do we mean by almost? Well, you can't get a well-groomed lawn delivered, but you can get a chicken parmesan delivered. A cabana? That's a no. But a banana? That's a yes. A nice tan? Sorry. Nope. But a box fan? Happily yes. A day of sunshine? No. A box of fine wines? Yes. Uber Eats can definitely get you that. Get almost, almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. Order now. Alcohol in select markets. Product availability may vary by region. See app for details. Welcome back to Rams Up, your favorite LA Rams podcast. We are part of the Fans First Sports Network. You can follow us on our YouTube channel as well at LA Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. I'll be joined occasionally by my football gurus, Paul and Ian. Let's get to it. Welcome back, everybody. It is Niners Week, Rams Niners. Sunday at SoFi, and I have my game preview for you. Hey, you know what? The last time the Rams celebrated a win that mattered, well, how much did it really matter? Well, the last regular season game the Rams won was against these 49ers in Santa Clara. Let's make it two in a row. History between these two teams, pretty darn extensive. 49ers hold a 78-69 lead with three ties. Last time they played, it was that game at Santa Clara. Rams and Carson Wentz beat them 21-20. Puka Nakua gets the rookie receiving record, and then they let him take a seat. Carson Wentz runs for a fourth-quarter score and then hits 2-2 for the two-point conversion and the win. It was glorious. It was meaningless. But, hey, it's always great to beat the 49ers. All the talk about the 49ers owning the Rams. Rams have actually won two of the last five, so maybe they're turning this ship around a little bit. This series has been known for streaks. You know, the Niners had that big streak in the dark days before the greatest show on turf, and then the Rams ran off a bunch of wins in a row. Then it went back in the 49ers' favor. But here we go. Right now, over the last five, fairly even. What is my favorite Ram 49er game. Are you kidding me? How about the 2021 NFC Championship game? One of the most glorious games ever. Rams 20, 49ers 17. And I still have that image in my head of all those 49er fans filing out of SoFi, disillusioned, depressed. Rams go on to the Super Bowl and win it. The odds in this game, I've been seeing them slipping a little bit. It was up to 7.5. I see it as low as 6.5 now. That's likely due to the additional injuries the 49ers have been incurring. We'll get to that in a minute. Weather should not be a factor. Typical LA in late September. And, you know, it's kind of sort of indoors anyways. What did they do last year? Well, they went 12-5, won the NFC West, had the bye... The Packers, meanwhile, flew into Dallas and won in Dallas, as they always do, and then traveled to San Francisco and lost there, as they always do. Then the Niners met up with the Lions in the NFC Championship game, and 
Lions really should have won that game. Gave it away. Thank you, Josh Reynolds. And the 49ers get the win, move on to the Super Bowl. And it looked like they had that in hand. Then that muffed punt, Chiefs come storming back and get the win. So the 49ers Super Bowl drought continues. Oh, so sad to hear this. They have not won a Super Bowl in 30 years now since 1994. This year, they beat the Jets at home. Jets looked kind of discombobulated. Kind of a scheduling advantage for the 49ers. Aaron Rodgers still dusting the cobwebs off, I think, because he looked pretty good against the Patriots. And then the 49ers travel to Minnesota, and Sam Darnold and Justin Jefferson get it done, and the 49ers loss. They drop to 1-1. One and one. You know, the 49ers over the last few years have been really good on defense and on offense near the top every year, it seems like. So far this year, they're second in passing yards. They also have 282 yards rushing, so well over 100 a game. And they're giving up just over 100 yards rushing a game on defense. So they're kind of where they've always been. Maybe not the defense of a couple years ago, but still pretty darn good. Still coached by Kyle Shanahan entering his eighth year. They're on to another defensive coordinator. I think it's their fourth in four years, right? They had Robert Sala and then D'Amico Ryans, who both moved on to head coaching jobs. Bring in Steve Wilkes, the old Arizona coach, last year, and their defense did fall off a little bit. So now they've moved on to Nick Sorensen as their new D.C. What their 2024 draft looked like. I thought their 2023 draft was kind of odd. This one... Well, in the first round, they picked wide receiver Ricky Pearsall out of Florida. Everybody loves this guy. And then he had that unfortunate incident where he took a shot on the way to an autograph session. So he's been out. They have two Florida State Seminoles to match up with the Rams. They're both defensive players as well. Cornerback Renardo Green and linebacker Tatum Bethune. Bethune was a seventh round pick. Green, a second round pick. Offensive lineman. Dominic Pooney in the third round. He is the only one of these rookies that is starting. Safety Malik Mustafa out of Wake Forest. Paul Walia highlighted him in our mock drafts. And running back Isaac Garendo out of Louisville. He's a burner. I thought he'd be getting more carries, but so far it's been all Jordan Mason. Wide receiver Jacob Cowan out of Arizona. He muffed a punt last week. And offensive lineman Jared Kingston out of USC. He's probably very familiar with the Rams' offensive lineman, Justin Dedich. They were teammates there on that offensive line. The NFL season is finally here, so make sure you're ready with NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV. It gives you the most live NFL games all in one place, exactly what you need to make your Sundays more magical. Sign up today at youtube.com slash Sunday Ticket. Local and national games on YouTube TV. NFL Sunday Ticket for out-of-market games excludes digital-only games. What's up, guys? It's the champ, Sean O'Malley, here to talk to you about prize picks. Prize picks the best place to win real money while watching football. Run your game on prize picks. Prize picks will give you $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Just download the Prize Picks app and use code SPOTIFY. That's code SPOTIFY on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you play a $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details. Introducing our biggest GMC Acadia ever. Offering bigger screens, bigger views and even bigger journeys. Live your biggest life in the all-new GMC Acadia. My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. Their big free agent signings, well, our old buddy Leonard Floyd, linebacker Devondre Campbell, defensive tackle Malik Collins, and defensive end 
Yatur Gross Matos. Those were the big additions. Now, remember, the 49ers are still without Dre Greenlaw, their great linebacker, which explains the signing of Devondre Campbell. Their losses were plentiful. Defensive tackle Arik Armistead, defensive end Clellan Farrell, defensive end Randy Gregory, defensive tackle Sebastian Joseph Day, defensive tackle Javon Kinlaw, defensive end Chase Young. A lot of losses on this defense, and that's why it's still to be determined how good this defense is. So going into this game, They're going to be down a few guys, so Christian McCaffrey will be out, Debo Samuel will be out, and on offense, George Kittle, also questionable. He may not be able to go. So you got to have to say the key players on offense are their great left tackle, Trent Williams, perhaps the best in the business, Brock Purdy, Brandon Ayuk, who may be still a little bit rusty after that holdout, and Jordan Mason, the running back. On defense, Fred Warner I think is the best linebacker in the game. And then there's Nick Bosa and Leonard Floyd that we already mentioned, two guys that can really get at the quarterback. Other injuries, Traverius Ward, the cornerback, may not be able to go. And remember Drake Jackson? I was really kind of disappointed that the 49ers were able to get him, the defensive end out of USC, second round pick a couple years ago. And he's still hurt, still on IR. He's out of Centennial Corona, by the way, and USC. So I think we'll eventually see him, but it's not going to be in this game. Now, I am not going to spend an hour going over all of the Rams injuries. I'll tell you about the new ones. The new ones are Joshua Cardi, our kicker, who I had already identified as a potential player of the game. He may not be able to go. Rams have added Tanner Brown to the practice squad already. Based on the Rams' official Friday report, Davis Allen and Cooper Cup are out. Well, we knew about Cooper Cup. Joshua Cardi, Kobe Durant, and Bobby Brown, all questionable. What are my fearsome four keys to this game? Well, man, the Rams' run defense has been pretty sloppy. Tackling has been poor. They just can't let Jordan Mason get rolling. And if that means better play on the interior. Well, yeah, we're going to need that for sure. Better tackling. If Jordan Mason gets rolling, the Rams are going to have a really, really long day. And here's some key number two. You know, the Rams pass rush has been okay. It's been pretty good. We just aren't finishing. We got to put Brock Purdy on the ground. I think I've been saying this as a key for, for several weeks now, going back to last year. Let's put the quarterback on the ground. Seems like we're always oh so close and can't finish the deal. On offense, I think one key would be to diversify the offense. Ian and Paul talked about this in the roundtable extensively. And I think one of the answers potentially is going to 12 personnel, getting two tight ends out there. That might require uh, Davis Allen being active. We're going to need three tight ends active to run 12 personnel, I think. Don't have to run it every play, but let's mix it up. How about a two running back set with Kyron Williams and Blake Corum? Get a little creative. Yeah, I mean, Sean McVay is a genius, a mad scientist, or so we're told. But then we watch this offense over the last season or so. Uh, yeah, you know, they brought in the duo. They changed up the running game a little bit. But you got to change it week to week, don't you? You know, teams just know what we're going to do, it seems like. So let's mix it up on offense and 12 personnel, please. And that leads to the fourth key is just establishing the run. Matthew Stafford is still going to be able to move the ball through the air. Demarcus Robinson, Tyler Johnson. Hey, I'm really excited to see Jordan Whittington. Get Blake Corum and Kyron Williams involved in the passing game. A little bit of 2-2 Atwell stretching the field a little bit, maybe. I think our offensive line is going to be actually okay. It's going to be a challenge against this 49er defense, but we got to establish the run. we got to establish the run to make everything else work. Pistol formation, fine. How about some play action, though? 12 personnel. Make it easier for our offensive line and Matthew Stafford. In the passing game, take a little bit of weight off our offensive line by letting them attack instead of react, as Ian and Paul say. Now with Davis Allen out, that makes the 12 personnel a little bit more difficult. 
one of these tight ends off the practice squad are going to have to come up and help. Hey, can we get Hunter Long involved in this offense? What is up with that? The guy's really talented. Had some offensive snaps, had some routes, no targets. Just another example of McVeigh not being as creative as maybe we give him credit for. What is my prediction? You know what? I cannot pick the 49ers. I do not have it within me to pick the 49ers over the Rams ever. Rams 19, 49ers 17. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.